Good morning and welcome back to the broadcast for Time Network. I'm Jeff Snyder and this is BRN AM for Monday, March 30th, 2020. And our top story today, student borrower success. And joining me now is Sarah Settlemeyer. She is the project director for the Pew Charitable Trust. Sarah, thanks for joining us this morning. Thanks for having me. It's great to be here. It's great to see you. And obviously, or not obviously, you are working uh, from home. How, how are things going as an aside before we, we have our discussion? It's good. You know, I think there are always challenges when a whole team is working remotely. I'm doing my best to make sure everyone on my team feels connected to the work, feels connected to each other. So we're really figuring things out. As, we're building the plane as we're flying it. Yeah, but but just to point out, I mean, you, you all were really ahead of things in terms of uh, distributing your staff and making sure that you were not in uh, any type of danger whatsoever. Yeah, we, um, we've been, tele- this is the second week we've been teleworking and uh, we've just had great support. That's, that's awesome. So uh, your, one of your areas of expertise is student loans. And I gotta think that with what's happening in the country and in the world that may change some things as it relates to student loans. Yeah, I, what we're seeing right now, uh, w- which shouldn't be a shock to anyone, is that coronavirus is having a really big impact, not just on the economy, but on the way people think about their families, the way people think about work. And uh, what we've been studying for a long time is student loans, the student loan repayment system, and how things are going in even the best of times for those who are struggling the most. And so we're seeing a lot of the pre-existing problems and challenges in the student loan repayment system really playing out and really being exacerbated. And um, if you don't mind, I'd love to just sort of talk a little bit about what Pew does and how we're thinking about this problem to put it in context. Absolutely, please. So Pew really focuses on bringing data to big structural problems. We, you know, do research, bring groups together to really think about and build consensus around solutions. And my project, the project on student bar success, was launched in 2018, as I mentioned, really to dig into the problems in student loan repayment, what matters and and what's happening to borrowers who are most at risk of default and delinquency. And, you know, even in the best of times, that's a huge problem. Today, about 43 million people hold federal student loans and 20%, which is a huge number, are in default. And so we're seeing this, you know, pre-existing group of people who are struggling. And then this crisis happens, right? And, and people are losing their jobs. And, um, you know, things are things are going south for a lot of people. And so really thinking about what that means for these borrowers, what's happening to them. And we're really seeing two areas of concern. The first, of course, is economic disruption, people losing their jobs, people not being able to work because they're caring for a sick family member, people losing childcare. And so that loss of income very clearly impacts your ability to repay your loans. But at the same time that people need the most support, the student loan servicers, who are these third-party companies that the Department of Education contracts with to uh, collect student loan repayments and help borrowers navigate the system and choose options for repayment, are also experiencing disruption, right? Servicers are just people. And so they, these people work in a call center, they might um, be shut down because of various state policy or state initiatives they might have staff who are self-quarantining. So they're having reduced capacity at the same time borrowers are needing support. And so just these two uh, things are really exacerbating, again, the problems that already exist in the system. And we know, you mean, you mentioned the 20% of the outstanding loans, people in default. I mean, to my understanding is that the student loan debt issue is around $1.6 trillion Dollars? Did I did I get that number right? Yeah, give or take, give or take a couple billion. That's uh, that's right on. Yeah, and I mean that's obviously very significant. You 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 put that couple that with debt in general, consumer debt, which is also skyrocketed. 
I mean, that, that, is, that is a difficult thing when you are planning financially and you want to be financially independent, whether you're a family and you have children or you are a student getting out of college. That's a, that's a bit, it was already a big burden. I got to think that given the circumstance, it becomes an even bigger burden for people. Absolutely. We are seeing that those who are most likely to struggle in general also tend to be those who are most likely to be hit by this crisis. So, for example, households across the economic spectrum and across the income distribution see uh, financial shocks, right? Everyone has a car that breaks down sometimes or an appliance. And a lot of families do have volatile income. So income that varies from week to week or month to month. But these issues are much more significant and severe at the lower ends of the distribution. And those folks are also less likely to have savings, um, less likely to have other cushions in place, and so are more likely to be hit by a crisis like this, which, which just makes it important. You know, something we, we talked to borrowers across the country, we did a host of focus groups, and what we heard is that financial instability was the number one reason that people were struggling to repay their loans. And so you, as you can imagine, that financial instability is, is much greater today than it was a couple months ago. Absolutely. I mean, I think a lot, all of us are really struggling the last few weeks seeing, with this market volatility, concern about working from home, or you know, possibly being laid off from work. I mean, I, you know, that that instability has so many implications for people, and not just from the financial health, health, but also I would think mental health, Sarah. Ab absolutely, it, and really for the families we talked to in our focus group. It wasn't really an issue of prioritization. It was an issue of triaging, of thinking what your family really needs to do from day to day versus what other expenses you have, which really underscores the importance in a crisis like this of having built in flexibility around student loans, around the obligations people have that, that maybe you might need to take a back seat to figuring out childcare, to figuring out groceries. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's about Maslow's, uh, Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Did I, did I get that right? I think I remember something from college many years ago. I think we're coming up on 20 years for me, 25 years for me. Uh, but that, that seems to be uh, what I recall. Sarah, I want to hold you over for a couple of minutes. When we come sure. back, we're going to talk to Sarah more about the student loan issue. And maybe there might be some relief along the way. So uh, stay tuned right here on BRN AM. Imagine a new television network that will make you richer, healthier, and in control of your financial future. This network is for the policewoman in Nashville, Tennessee, the baker in Dubuque, Iowa, the teacher in Lexington, Kentucky. We want to make the idea of savings and retirement culturally relevant. But what do you see as a defining issue of the midterms? Especially for the smaller businesses, I mean, they are the lifeblood of the American economy. Featuring exclusive interviews, current affairs, and docu-series. 33 yeah. years old, you retired early. The philosophy is money only matters if it helps you live a life that you love. But you gotta start thinking about retirement as soon as you get in. The Broadcast Retirement Network will drive very high engagement with premium partnerships. So this isn't retirement and savings for your parents or grandparents. This is for all Americans. And we're gonna change the way you think about money. Welcome to the next frontier of retirement and savings. This is BRN, the Broadcast Retirement Network. The windows on our homes, they protect us in the ones we love, but they do much more. At Renewal by Anderson, making your home more comfortable is at the center of every window we make. It's why we custom build our windows in America 
and install them in as little as one day. It's why we build our frames with exclusive Fibrex composite material that's two times stronger than vinyl. It's why our glass helps keep your home warmer in winter, cooler in summer, and quieter all year long. It's why we stand behind every window with a 20-year limited warranty. Why not help lower your energy costs while giving your home and family the best? Call 1-800-835-6525 to schedule a free in-home consultation. Buy one, get one at 40% off with this special offer. Plus, get special financing with no money down, no monthly payments, and no interest for one full year. Renewal by Anderson, the better way to a better window. Call 1-800-835-6525 now. Welcome back. We're joined this morning by Sarah Saddlemeyer. She's the project director for the Pew Charitable Trust, and she's been focusing on loans. Sarah, thanks so much for sticking around this morning. Yeah, it's great to be here. Uh, these are really important issues. Abs absolutely, especially in these very trying and difficult times for so many Americans. Uh, so before we went to break, I think you, you, you know, we really hit on the challenge and the challenge now with all these financial uh, issues that people around the country and around the world are, are feeling. Uh, and, and you're wondering, um, we, we, we had uh, two stimulus bills pass at the time that we're doing this interview. One is, sounds like it, there's an agreement and we could see passage on, on Wednesday, which would be uh, a couple days after, you know, before we're airing this. But what, what are your thoughts in terms of resolving this, at least in the short run and in the long run? So something we're seeing from a student loans angle is that the administration, the Department of Education and Congress are all in agreement that student loans are an important issue to tackle. And they've done that so far in a host of ways. The president, first and foremost, declared a national emergency, which opens up a bunch of uh, authorities and the ability to provide additional flexibility, especially from the Department of Education. There's been an order to stop collecting interest on student loans to provide access to emergency forbearances. And recently, um, yesterday, we heard that they're going to stop collecting uh, collections on loans that are in default. So these are really important, you know, our research points to flexibilities like these being important to helping people manage their loans in the best of times, right? We are we are not in the best of times. And so beyond this, we're thinking about two things that really matter for people. The first is what additional flexibilities might be needed from an evidence-based perspective. And second, what happens after the crisis, after things have maybe not gotten back to normal, but when people come off of these pause payments or forbearances and start are repaying again. So, so to hit the first point, we're really thinking about, you know, a major issue that borrowers have is enrolling and re-enrolling in plans that take your income into account, which often mean that your payments are more affordable, right? So if you're making $25,000 a year or $30,000 a year, your payments may be less than someone who's making a lot more. And, and that's a really important safety net for a lot of borrowers. What, but, but right now, what that involves is submitting paperwork to your servicer. And, and as I talked about before the break, if your servicer isn't available to process that paperwork, that could push someone into delinquency or your payment could skyrocket, right? Because you haven't recertified your income to be able to, for, you know, for the department to know that this is the income you have and this is what your payment should be. So for folks who don't wanna be in these emergency forbearance to keep paying, they might not have the ability to continue to do that if they need to recertify. And also for if folks who do use the forbearances when they come off of them, if they wanna get into these plans, that might be tough. And so really thinking uh, creatively about ways that Congress and uh, the department and servicers can put uh, provisions in place to streamline, whether that's extending the deadline, whether that's making, it, making the documentation you need slightly more flexible for a temporary period. So that's one really important thing. Another is yeah. that is really having. Go ahead. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Sorry. No, no I was going to say. Go ahead. F finish your thought. A another really important thing is 
for the Department of Education and Servicers to be on the same page and be communicating about emergency provisions, about ways in the best way possible to maintain the level of service, again, that is possible, and really be opening lines of communication and, and, and ensure that plans are in place. Yeah. One question I was thinking about as you were kind of running through this is that, and I, I agree, I mean, it's something people need to step in. Longer term, I wonder what the challenge, I mean, we already know that colleges and universities are under a lot of challenge as well, right? They would need to get students in. Potentially school years have been canceled, I think. Uh, it's been a while since I've been in school, but school years have been canceled as a result of this. So there's going to be an impact to colleges and universities to this year and that has a financial impact going into next year and, and, and the following year, following years. But what, what does this mean in terms of student loans and people actually selecting colleges and universities in the future? If, there, if there's so much debt that people take on, will that change their op opinion and point of view as a family, as a student, um, about selecting their college of the, of the future? I think one thing that is clear from this emergency is that people are rethinking a lot of decisions. And we know from past recessions and from past issues such as, you know, hurricanes or other national disasters that that does impact in different ways, college enrollment, people's borrowing decisions. And another thing sort of along those lines that we're thinking a lot about is, is the people who are on these forbearances, who pause their payments for the length of this emergency, at the same time, they're going to be coming off of those. They're going to be re-entering repayment. How do we prepare a really large group of people to re-enter repayment and, and uh, think about sort of the tools available to them if, if they're still struggling? And how do we get servicers ready to, to take all that incoming um, calls, paperwork, and sort of get everyone back online. So I think these things are all going to be happening together. Yeah, absolutely. But I like what you said earlier about flexibility. I think that that to me, uh, whether or not you're, you have a student loan or don't have a student loan, if you're a, an employee, an employer, that during this difficult time is going to be that that is going to be a key element to success uh, across the board. Sarah, yeah. it's always a pleasure uh, chatting with you and I appreciate having you on the program and uh, look forward to chatting with you sometime in the future. Thanks and, and thanks for having me. And that wraps up this episode of BRN AM. Have a financial topic or someone of interest that you think we should talk to? Drop us a line. And don't forget, for all the news in retirement, markets, technology, personal finance, and so much more, check out today's edition of The Morning Pulse. So until tomorrow, I'm Jeff Snyder. Stay safe, keep on saving, and don't forget, roll with the changes. Attention, the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services has officially authorized new benefits that Medicare Advantage plans may include. To get the benefits you deserve, you can call the Medicare Coverage Helpline. Hi, I'm Joe Namath. If you're on Medicare, this is important information. I called the Medicare Coverage Helpline and they instantly looked up my coverage. In this one simple call, they offered to enroll me in a plan that includes rides to medical appointments, private home aides, doctors and nurses visits by telephone, and even home delivered meals. The plan also includes dental, vision, hearing, and prescription drug coverage all at no additional cost. Don't delay. Call to see if the new benefits are available in your area. Call the number on your screen now. It's free. Call 1-800-757-1451. That's 1-800-757-1451.